Nikki, first question for Nikki. How long are your legs really in inches? 36 inside the legs. There we go. 36 inside the leg. That answers that one. Um, let's see. Uh, <laughs> Ruth, could you please give us a, bl a bit of Gladys? Well, Yes, she's been far, far down the road, you know. Um, actually, I have enjoyed this. And I'm sorry I didn't know many of the questions on the quizzes, but I, I had no idea whose knees they were. And of course, Dave is much better at that sort of thing than I am. But anyway, uh, she isn't uh, dead yet, our Gladys. <laughs> she's doing very well. And just to say... Let's the one. Tomorrow is a lovely day. <laughs> There's the blue, <laughs> the white cliffs of Dover. Tomorrow, just you wait and see. Oh, very well done. That was great. Um, next question for Sue. What was your favourite episode to film? This you know, Tracy in Ashfield. Oh, no, no. Oh, darling, from something in Ashfield. Oh, it's terrible. It's a terrible uh, thing to ask anybody. It, it, oh, I mean, I know you're interested in everything else, but I'm not really sure. But uh, the ones I write really with every single person in it was That's My Bum. I mean, it was fantastic because there all the yellow coats were having to stick their bums in these cutouts. So we used to get all the dialogue <laughs> from what they were saying. And then, and what was it? And Big Rick used to say, three years of Raja for this. <laughs> she was really upset. I just loved it. Everybody was in a panic and stuff. And there was the very droll uh, Mr. Fairbrother. Pies, pies, who wants a custard pie? Absolutely no feeling at all. No, that was my favourite, really. Fabulous. Lovely. Thank you, Sue. Uh, next question is for David. Uh, do you ever get recognised from being on the show? Um, that's from... Uh, who's that from? That's from uh, Chris Doyle. When I'm walking down <laughs> local high street in my yellow coat. <laughs> 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 do you really? Do you really wear it? And, and, and do you no, think? I, 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 what I do, I, I give talks amongst my other things that I do and I take my yellow coat with me so it's it gets used but um occasionally people shout out you know hardly hi to me so it's it's fun but tend to be local people that know me mm -hmm. okay gotcha so you're a bit of a legend locally a big legend locally. big legend <laughs> Big <laughs> Very big um, in the <laughs> oh, Sue, this is a nice question. So, uh, Sue, this is from Adrian Pye. Uh, did you enjoy it when Peggy finally achieved her dream to become a yellow coat? Adrian, I cannot tell you. It's one of those fabulous moments in any show that anybody's ever done, talking way back, even in the, um, the days of the, you know, just silent movies. <laughs> to convey something that is absolutely fabulous and just, I just really was thrilled to bits. And, and when anything like that happens, if you believe in something and a character that you've got, then you really want to be that character. And all the time, you know, I desperately wanted my dream to come true. And it was the most marvellous thing in the world. And I just loved it. Yeah. So thank you for that question, Adrian. Bless you. Great. That's great. Uh, this one is from SB. This is to Linda and Jeff. Where would April and Spike be today? Oh. Uh, divorced. Divorced. <laughs> <laughs> Very clear about that, okay. Yeah, couldn't agree more. <laughs> okay, who would start the divorce? Oh, well, I think Jeff, because he, he really, his heart was in comedy. He wanted to work. He wanted to be a comic. And, and mm -hmm. April just wanted to settle down. And she wanted him to work in the tax office. And she wanted to be a housewife and have babies. And, and mm -hmm. I don't think that was, I mean, it's your character, Jeff, you say. Um, but but I, I think that you would have left her. I definitely. Yeah. I, think it, I think it was a disaster waiting to happen. Disaster oh, yeah. waiting to happen. Can I show you something, Kevin, before we... Carry on, look at her. Oh, wow! <laughs> you got a hiding eye face mask. Where'd you get that from? Well, it's available online from eBay. I've got one as well. Oh, really? Oh, that's lovely. Yeah, that's lovely. 
Must get those. Look at that. It's got the yellow coat on it, the, yeah. little, the white shirt. Oh, oh that's wonderful. That's so Ricky, so Ricky and I went away in the summer. We went to call food together and we were sent those masks. And um I was asked if we they could have a photograph of us at the on the aeroplane. And so there's a good really good picture of Ricky and I yeah. with the masks on the aeroplane, just about to take off in the summer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. great. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> um, next question yeah, for you, Nikki. Uh, yeah. This is from, I think it's Chitty75. In recent years, you starred in the, uh, you started in the Heidi High tour as Yvonne. Uh, how different was that tour to the original stage show, 1983 and 1984? Well, wow, that's a very well researched question. Well, mm. yeah, I mean, yeah, very well researched. Well done. Yeah, I we, we did do a stage tour. I did it with Barry. Barry was probably one of the only other um, original members of the cast, actually. Um, we did it in 2010. And playing Yvonne Stuart Hargreaves was not nearly as much fun as playing Sylvia. <laughs> but um, I mean, bless her, Diane Holland, who played Yvonne, was, was she played it wonderfully. And actually, I didn't realise how difficult it was to play until I had to play it. But um, I enjoyed doing it. But she was a little bit waspish in comparison to Sylvia, who was outrageous. Um, yeah, you know, but Yvonne, Yvonne was great, great fun to play. And I played it with Barry, so I was playing Yvonne to Barry, Barry Stuart Hargreaves, um, um, yeah, Barry. To, I, to, to, yeah. I went to see it, and she was wonderful. It was a great show, actually. Oh, thank you, Jeff. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Thank you, great. Uh, this one is to all the cast. Let me change to gallery for you. Get you all on. So, would you consider doing a one-off Heidi High episode? as you are now as your characters so like a, a, a comeback episode and you know this this reunion has got like a bit of a buzz we got like a bit of press i think daily ml might do a bit on it who knows so if you know one of the writers at the bbc kind of thought oh yeah maybe we could do a, a some kind of reunion or reboot would you guys be up for it absolutely not oh okay <laughs> that kills that <laughs> It's not any question of, if you see, when you start to reboot stuff, you've only got, and even if it's just a one-off, it's always going to be disappointing. Yeah. People want, want it mm. to happen, but deep down, they'd be disappointed because it wasn't what they remembered. Nobody's the same. It's all yeah. of it. And it would be excruciatingly, oh, naff. Better to just go and say, besides, they've got the box sets, they've got everything else. We don't need to go back and, and just think, oh, well, that wasn't very good, was it? The audience mm. thinking... Bloody no. well, that's my personal view, to be fair. That's all. And uh, uh, Jimmy's, uh, not, Jimmy's not with us anymore. I mean, it would have to be Jimmy writing it, wouldn't it? And, and Jimmy's not there. Exactly, and, and they're not there. But on the yeah. other hand, I, I truly believe that you should never look back. Yeah. And I, I think Sue's absolutely right that um, it would be totally wrong when they tried it with are you being served, it didn't work. No. And um, it won't work with Heidi High. Put new people in it, by all means. Listen, but, you listen, know, I don't want listen, to go back to playing Gladys, like you know. Talking about it, this is the way to do it. We can't recreate it because Jimmy and David- No, are no, exactly. No. That's right. Yeah. Well, it's Jimmy lovely to reminisce. Too many have gone. Sadly. It's lovely yeah. to reminisce about it. Yeah, gotcha. Uh, right, so let's uh, move on then to the next question. This one from, uh, is it Lai? Lai Discro? Uh, to all cast, who do you think was the better entertainment manager? Ooh. Oh, that's, oh, that's the topic. I'll go to gallery again. There we go. I'll tell you what, I, my opinion is they were so both so different. Oh, yeah, well said. Very different. Simon Cadell was an absolute genius as, as Jeffrey Fairbrother. It was pu pure magic what he used to come out with. It was so understated and brilliantly performed. And it was di so difficult for Ruth as Gladys when we had Clive um, Dempster come in and do this. That was um, David Griffin. Uh, David Griffin came and played Clive David Dempster. Griffin. It turned Ruth's character as Gladys on its head because in the, in the first four years, she'd been doing all the flirting. And in the, in the second four years, she was mm. doing all the fending off. 
because David, yeah. David Griffin Clive was coming on doing all the flirting. She ended up marrying him at the end of it, but that doesn't matter. But the thing is, she it turned Ruth's character on his head, but the show survived. Yeah. I think that's off to David Griffin because I think he did a wonderful job. Had a hard I thought he was play, great. You know. A very, very different actor, okay. um, having played opposite both of them. Um, I, I agree. I agree with you, Jeff. Um, I played with what was on the script. Yeah. So it wasn't hard. Yeah. Um, you played what was there on yeah. the script. Uh, mm -hmm. You didn't query it. You just did it. And um, I found, obviously, so with Simon going, I knew in the first series that he was, go when he was going to go. I told nobody because I was asked not to say, say by him. I don't think he'd even told Jimmy and David when he was going, but I knew. And it didn't phase me because I knew that the writers, Jimmy and David, would accommodate it. And I did what was on the paper. Mm. And that's what I suppose I we all had to. And though, it worked. Know. Worked perfectly. But darling? Yeah. Yeah, it worked perfectly. And that's what I did. I think I suppose we all had to adapt to that. And then, yeah, we, I don't think any of, of us. Did. Did. But we did. But what I'm saying is, I don't think any of us were ever detrimental in any way to, oh God, this is so difficult having somebody different now and it's all a bit, that can become very, no. well, David and Jimmy no. wouldn't have that. Absolutely they not. We tried to accommodate no. him as they had to, if they had to accommodate us, you know, David was very, very yes, absolutely. Right they were marvelous. We were, so yeah, we'd, we'd all been strengths. As... Mm. But that was it. But yeah, they so knew they your did. strengths. Yeah, exactly. Former. Yeah, yeah. They'd done that already. They'd absorbed it and, you know, it was just natural to them yeah. when they did these uh, characters for you. And it was great. Mm -hmm. It was absolutely great. I mean, I enjoyed working with both of them. I did. I, I learned I, I an awful work. lot <laughs> from Simon Fidel because he was, he was a great technician. Yeah. Um, and that's where I'd learned an awful lot a hell of a lot, in fact. What with him and David, and David taking you behind the camera and saying, now this is the shot I'm going to do. It's a mid shot or whatever, or a long shot or yeah. a close up. You know, it was just a halcy in times. It really, really was. Yeah. Great. Well, yeah. I'm going to move on to the, to the next question, guys. Uh, next one is from Jake Smith or Jake Smythe. Uh, this is to all the cast. What was the filming schedule like? How long did it take to film a series in studio and on location? That, that's a lot to answer. Come and do it in a nutshell. Each person's got their own. It was extremely very well organised. Each episode, especially the filming, it had a different colour episode on the script. One week was pink, another episode was blue. So what I'm saying is you knew exactly what you were doing, when you were asked to be in what scene, what time you were called, and there was no very, very, um, there was no variance from that unless of course it rained and they had to redo something. So you were in safe hands all the way. I, I certainly believe that you were costume first, then you were made up. Then it was like, okay, get ready for rehearsal on set. It was all a well oiled machine from what I can gather. Lunch was always about one o'clock. You broke the tea about four. So what I'm, what I'm saying is it was, nothing was left to chance. It was incredibly well organized. And we really felt that all we had to do was get on with our job, learn our lines, do the best, best we could that day, and then go home and go out and have something to eat. It was marvelous. And the, cater the catering was superb, wasn't it? The cereal. Those bacon butties in the morning. Was yeah. all the filming was done, all the exteriors were done at the holiday camp, first of all, in the first three weeks of our yeah. engagement. And then we went back to London and did every, an episode a week for the next six or seven weeks. And we rehearsed all week for the studio. And then and on Friday, when we went into the studio, we did all the scenes in order and they played in all the filmed uh, scenes that we'd pre recorded in sequence so that the studio audience 
saw the whole thing going and in, slotting into place. And we had all their laughter on, on uh, film as well. So it was beautifully organized, brilliantly. Okay, great, cool. Yeah. Thanks for that. Kevin, I'm gonna move I, on to the next question, guys. Kevin, can I just uh, this is, quickly, can oh, I, yeah, Nikki, can yeah. Quickly, I have to go, everybody. I'm really sorry. I've got another Zoom call coming in in three minutes. Okay. Uh, thank, thank you so you. much, everybody. Fabulous well, to see you. you. Love you, love you, Jeff, okay. love you. Thanks, Nikki, take care. You love you, love you. Stay safe, Gary See you soon. Thanks, all right. Cheers, Nikki. Take care. Be safe. Be safe. Talk okay, great. soon. So, oh, that's love. Don't Spielberg to wait. <laughs> <laughs> um, so next question from Andrew Biggs. Um, so who's got a great memory of working with Jimmy Perry? Jimmy Perry, Me? anyone? Oh, Ooh. yeah. Linda. Oh, Very quick. Oh, I've always got, no. I, yes, but Polly. Well, Linda. Oh no, well, he was just the, he's just the business. He was just the nicest, most professional. I'm sorry, I adored Jimmy. He was like the, everybody's second dad, wasn't he, Polly? He loved, he adored yeah. you. But he, he, he watched, he was, let me tell you that he watched every single person, every single actor. He used to watch him watching and he watched everybody's mannerisms and he put their personality into their, um, into their, 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 their scenes and their script. And he was just, wasn't he, a genius. Oh, God bless him. I had to laugh though, because, um, sorry, Don, just to say, when he when we were on, um, when we were doing the filming, the actually, not the filming in the studio, the OB filming, there we were, and Jimmy was trying <clears throat> desperately to save fit. I mean, he was still a gorgeous looking bloke, even when he died at 90, oh, God love him, you know. Anyway, <laughs> he used to walk, he'd run his blooming legs off all the way around, you know, the actual camp area and coming back and by the sea. And then he'd come back and he'd go. And I said, I'm just going now then, darling, for the filming. I said, oh, you all right? He said, oh, you oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I mean, he was absolutely bloody knackered, poor son. But it didn't really matter. He still did it. And he was the most handsome man and very sensitive and cried a lot, only because he was um, just sentimental. And uh, one of my favourite men in the entire world, I have to say. Yeah. It's interesting that Jimmy and David were both totally different characters, weren't they? Their personalities yeah. were different. Yeah. Jimmy was more showbiz, water rats and all that kind of stuff. And David was much quieter, introverted yeah. person. Yes. Which what is why they, they worked so well together, Absolutely. wasn't it? Mm. Um, Can I say? say Jimmy, did uh, we? It's only fair. It's, thank you, Linda, for saying that, and David, because obviously I know the question was, did we have any nice memories of Jimmy? But well, of course we did. But and I think we we'll all be in agreement here that you know he couldn't have done it without David and vice versa. So David yeah. was just as tremendous as Jimmy was. So yeah, I just wanted well, to set well that said, straight well. a bit. Absolutely mm. well said. Together they were they were magic and like. So that. ladies, and gentlemen. To the left, um, I, I had worked with um, uh, Jimmy when yes. he was actor manager at, yes. at Watford Rep. I was 21 and he was just about to leave Watford. It was going to go civic, one of the first um, reps that went civic, i.e. it was going to be funded by the local authorities, right? David, um, Jimmy, um, was a man that only understood the business, show business. So he decided to leave. There was a party um, on his leaving, and I met a gentleman there called David Croft and his wife, Anne Croft, who was at this particular point uh, an agent in the West End. Well, let me go on a bit now. I always kept in touch with Jimmy. Um, I'd done Principal Boy for him for about four years running and done various musicals and a few plays. And um, he did say to me, I'm going to write this Dad's Army. And he used to actually tell us about it. And it was great. I said, oh, that, that's very good, Jim. Yeah, yeah, you could, that, that sounds like it might work. You know, nobody's ever done um, a sitcom about um, the um, the army, the civilian army during the war. So anyway, let's travel on a bit. Um, we're talking now of 19, that was 
That was 20 years previous to 1979. And he phoned me, sorry, 1979. And he, he phoned me and he said, um, Ruth, I've got a part for you. And I said, in what? He said, well, I'm going to write a new series. Oh, are you? I said, um, well, that's good. Um, will you come up and see David Croft? Well, I remembered me meeting this guy at this party, David Croft. And of course, he produced also Dad's Army and Ain't Half Hot. Um, I thought, God, that's, that's amazing. So up I go to his um, uh, flat in, in uh, Westminster. Westminster. Mm. And um, I get the part. Pardon? Westminster. Did you say something, David? Yeah, it's Westminster. Those high yes, schools, Westminster. Those steps, steps up That's the right. The That's right, the top, the top flat. And they used to climb up it. There was about six, six stories to go to get up oh. to this flat. Oh, oh, anyway, yeah. um, I got the part um, and it was marvellous. But I nearly didn't get the part because they were contemplating putting in... Um, Windsor Davis, because he'd done so well in Ain't Half Hot, they were contemplating putting him into High D High. And then they decided at the last minute that they wanted a woman to do it. And they wanted a Welsh woman to do it. And the only one that they knew was me. So <laughs> that's how I got it. <laughs> yeah. that, that actually leads me, Ruth, on, that, quite nicely into my next question, which is from Ben Stock. Um, Ed. And it's to uh, anyone really. Um, and if you could have played any other part in a David Croft sitcom that you didn't play, what would it have been? Oh. Mrs. Slocum. <laughs> Mrs. Oh, Slocum. You'd be great. Yeah, you did great. I loved her because she was just my sort of human. I loved it when yeah. she kept talking about her pussy. You, you could have padded out. You'd have been brilliant at that. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I, I just loved but, it because you know why. It, she might have been caricatural. I think yeah. I just made that up. But that didn't matter because uh, David's stuff was always almost bordering on farce. So it yeah. wasn't matter. It was just, but that's my personal view. I don't know what you think, Linda. What would you like to have played somewhere? I'd like to have gone into You Rang Me Lord and played Poppy. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I wanted to, oh. I would have liked to have done that. And, and you were oh. delicious in that. <laughs> Sorry? Yeah. I'd like to play June. I'd like to play. Perhaps I'd like to play June Whitfield's part uh, when she played opposite Terry Scott, and that was produced by Jimmy. Uh, no, by, by David Croft. Uh, Do you remember that one? What, what? June yeah. and I. If I I'm mean... much older than you lot. <laughs> I would like to have played Pike in Dad's Army because think oh, of all repeats. Yes. But you know what, though, David? Because I saw Ian. Oh, you know how you do? You bump into each other, you know, not down the street, but somewhere. And God, he looks just like you. I'd say, fantastic. Yeah. Because you've always been handsome, just like <laughs> Ian, really. Because you've got the same sort of face and the same hair colouring. Yeah, you'd have been fantastic. All these repeats, you could have had four conservatories <laughs> by now, three horses. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you remember at a reunion, we had a reunion at Dover Court, and uh, one was convinced that I'd been singing at her, uh, her home, a, a social club, and it was your brother Tony. That, yeah. Uh, and I, I, <laughs> you're, the third, you're the third twin. You're the third yeah. twin. No, it was you. I said, no, it was me. <laughs> she was convinced. Oh, dear. Yeah. I'd be, I'm be, be third web twin. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, anyway, Ben, this is just a question by Kevin. We're just because we know Ben, he's fabulous. He's very, very Mr. Showbiz himself. And he just did a fantastic sold out concert, I believe, somewhere near Waterloo Station. Oh, wow. Sorry, I couldn't go, but I heard it was terrific oh, and sorry. great. And it's really, really nice to sort of just say hello to you, darling. And God bless you. And hopefully we'll see each other when uh, we when we all can. Cool, big up Thank to Ben. You. Cool, thanks, Ben. Uh, next question from Tim Wells. Um, any stories about Paul? Well, about what? Paul Shane. Paul Shane, yeah. 
One of the um, nicest, so nicest guys in this business. <laughs> yeah, I've got one. But at, at, at the time when um, we all started, we were all starting, and I think, do you know, it was amazing. We were on about five pounds a week. I mean, all of us, not necessarily as low as that, but you know, we never had much money. And he was the bank. Shaney was the bank. And on a Wednesday, I remember going and saying, Oh, Paulie, you couldn't do me a favour, could you? I'm a bit brassic. And do you mind? I'll pay you back when we get paid next week. And do you know what? He always did. He was earning a grand sum of about five, six hundred pounds a week 40 years ago. Obviously, yes, he was. big in the club, you know. So he was the most marvellous bloke in that respect. And he was a lovely family man. And God, we laughed. I mean, it was just, and I remember just going back to the pilot, there was myself, Ruth, and Paul, and we stood, we sat at the edge of the bed in the chalet doing the film because it was the real chalet. Oh, thank God, when we got to the studio, it was a replication. But we sat there, absolutely perished. And he said, um, we'd finished the filming. And I must stress this because nobody ever had any drinks. So there we were at the end and we just went and he had little thimbles full of whiskey. And he just said to us, he said, well, kids, me and Ruth and that. And he said, do you think we did all right? I said, I don't know, darling. We've just got to work for the best. And he went, well, here's to us then, girls. And everybody, God bless, down the hatch. Oh, and, that's um, lovely. Right. We did, the three of us. I remember that, Paul. Yeah. yeah. It was I remember also borrowing money off him. Yeah. And you think it's little things like that, yeah, when you're all in it together. Lovely. You know, we'd only done the pilot, we hadn't any idea. I mean, even though the crew laughed, you can't always say that. That's an old wives' tale, in my view, sometimes. All the crew laugh, it, it's all right. But I just never like to believe anything until you get the proof is in the pudding. And um, so it was lovely to know that we were all there at that lovely moment. And then, and then of course, we got on in, in, in all of us and it went to better things. So thank you, Shaney. I'm, oh, I'm toasting you in my Highland Spring sparkling water. The first day I ever met. May him. I just say about uh, yeah. Paul Shane? The place. Oh, sorry, sorry. I was I was cast as Spike uh, quite early on, and uh, they called me down to London to uh, meet him at the acting rehearsal rooms to read. So he was one of several actors they called in to read for Ted. Mm. Uh, uh, they got him into the rehearsal room and then it, they chatted to him, Jimmy and David, and then they called me in to join him to read a couple of scenes. Uh, and I walked into the room and he was standing right in the middle of the floor, this enormous room. And I walked over to him, I put my hand out and I said, hello, Paul, and it's lovely to meet you. Uh, and he said, lovely to meet you too. And he looked at me and he sort of said, have we met before? And I said, no, because I'd have remembered. And he sensed it in that moment, as I did, that the chemistry was just there, just like that. It was there in between the two of us. And, uh, you know, and it, we sensed it. We just had something together. Uh, and it, I think it showed obviously over the years that we worked together it showed in the work we did but there was a chemistry between us on that instant moment that we first met uh, and it, you know I've never forgotten that moment and I never will it was lovely to work with that man that's, that's beautiful I'll, I'll chuck it over to uh, Ruth uh, over to Ruth Kevin. yeah Ruth yes um, well um, actually Paul was our best man my husband's best man when we got married oh, wow. um, about 1983. And um, uh, we used to go on holiday together. Uh, and we used to go to the Algarve period because that was the place where you could get some sun, you know, straight after pantomime. I mean, we invariably did pantomime together, um, Paul and I, and we became very, very firm friends. Um, and when he passed away, but when Dory passed away, his wife, it was so sad. Uh, and I felt as though the nucleus of the cast had gone because there was no doubt about it. His character was the nucleus yeah. of us lot, the, the entertainment 
uh, lot. We, it, it, he was the nucleus of us. And uh, it was very, very sad. And uh, I miss him yeah. to this day. Yeah. Oh, now, come on. Now, come on. All the happy, happy stuff. Yeah. I've, 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 got, a, I, I, I've got a Shane story if you want one. Uh, yeah, yeah but I just really want to acknowledge, acknowledge Ruth. Thank you so much for sharing that, Ruth. I, I can really tell that's a very intimate uh, moment. And I really appreciate that you you, you shared that w with us and, and all the fans watching. So I really thank you for that. Um, over to you, Linda. Uh, it, it's, uh, I did a play with him called, I don't know if I'm sure you all know, The Mating Game. Um, and I played, I think she's called Julia or Junior. I can't remember the character, but she's the very version of um, Secretarial one. And um, Shane was playing the comedy, you know, the big comedy part. I'm sure you know the thing. Um, and we, we were on stage and it was the first night. So we were all nervous anyway. And I was kind of wandering around the stage uh, doing the play. And I could feel something in my back, like tickling. And I was sort of like I had a... You know, <laughs> and I suddenly realised I had a spider. that had been a spider that crawled into my costume while I was getting changed. And I was like that the whole time oh, wow. looking at me. And I said to him quietly, I said, this is the first night of the play. I said, I think I've got a spider down my dress. Uh -huh. <laughs> and in the middle of the play, when I'm supposed to be kind of very dressed up and virginal, Shaney oh, pulled it right. and pulled the spider out. And yes. um, it, so the whole it was I mean it sort of ruined but he Involved saved me. my life then because there was a spider crawling up my back and he just pulled my zip down grabbed hold of it and got the spider and went right that's it now we can carry on and and I just finally like to say it, it, he said to me one night Jeffrey Holland is, is one of the nicest people in the whole world and I love him dearly he's my best best mate wow well, big acknowledgement to you there, Jeff. There we go. I can remember we went to, when we did the um, stage show at Bournemouth, do you remember the guys? And, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Paul it was suddenly, you know, got a few bob in his pocket and he, he bought a brand new Jag, didn't he? Remember that? Hey, what? Oh, oh that, new Jag, yeah. that's right. And the, yeah. reg the registration <laughs> number stuck with me. It was A47GEL. And why I remember that, I just don't know. But I remember the car very well. And he was a bit <laughs> not. They, they didn't give him a bottle of champagne when he bought it. <laughs> just a minute. Is he earning more than me? <laughs> <laughs> he earned more than all of us. But, you know, the most extraordinary thing about him was that he never... I mean, he lent money when we were short. And we were, I mean, Pollard and I, I was definitely short. I mean, I was the only woman in the cast that had a family to look after. Um, I had children at home to, and that's why I was partly doing the job. And I'll be quite honest with you, because um, let's be honest about these things. I had to work because um, I had children to look after. And I remember I didn't have much money at the pilot, and he was there. Here we are, Bruce, he said, pay me back when you can. Aww. And I just thought that was amazing of him. So kind, yeah. kind man, you know. Yeah, he understood. Well, some, some it's really always nice to have kindness in showbiz. Sometimes the people aren't kind enough, and um, they should be. I think kindness in general in life, if you can be, is marvellous, especially in the recent times now. Everybody needs a little bit of that. And, you know, it doesn't really matter what you do. You might just say hello to somebody who feels as if they're a bit lonely. So I just think that's what we had between us. We were always kind to I each other. I think so. <laughs> and it was a family, Sue. It was a family. Yeah. That we have. I think that's what came across as well. So many people, I don't know about the ladies and gentlemen, uh, have joined us tonight. I, I always think it's nice that, that um, we, we've always had that said about us on the show. Always. Do you all get on? Do you still see each other? Because we hope you do. We hope you, you're as nice to each other uh, off stage as you are on, because that's why we tune in, because we, we just like you guys, isn't it? So, yeah. isn't that nice? We well, we were. Mm. That's great. It, uh, it was Jeff, a family. And do you remember? Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, Kevin. 
I was just going to say, you know, we're all in this together. And it was it was a, a real team. It was an absolute team. That's right. Yeah. Earlier, right. Like a family, was. family together. And we, you know, we all got on together. And in if fact, you and I did that time together last Christmas, didn't we, darling? We had a wonderful oh, time. It was <laughs> fabulous. I loved it. I was the wicked queen yeah. and Jeff was the fabulous. Ah, he was the alderman Fitzwarren. And he had this incredibly big song. Do you remember that? It, it, it had so many lyrics in it, Dave. I don't know why you remembered it. I mean, I, I just would have just gone, bloody hell. But you were great. You never faltered at all. That's the pro, dear. <laughs> Oh, cool. So uh, uh, next uh, up, uh, I've had uh, lots of questions about uh, Kenneth Connor. So any uh, uh, really good memories of Kenneth Connor? Oh, Kenneth Connor was a joy. He was yeah. an absolute joy to work with um, because he was of the old school again, which is what Jimmy Perry and David Croft wanted. Because remember, this was set in 1959. Um, so we'd all been through the war, supposedly. Um, the sec uh, not the Boer War, the Second World War. Yeah. And um, he wanted, he, when he brought somebody in to um, take over a part or a, a augment a part, um, they all had form, as it were, in the business. And Ken was just wonderful, wasn't he? You know, he really was. Yeah. Um, and do you remember the other guy um, that played... Um, the, the waiter in the Tratatatatoria. Graham Stark. Yeah, Graham Stark. Yeah. 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 Graham Starkey. <coughs> Graham Starkey. Yeah, Graham Stark. Graham Stark. I remember he said on um, one of the episodes when you had all that spaghetti big lot go I've just got upset. I loved it when he said, Ah, you were sworn to secrecy because you've been for the third time for this pile of spaghetti. And I just loved it from <laughs> Graham right. Stark. Oh, Mr. Pug, I have not seen you since the last time I've seen you. I just remember some of these lines that come out. I loved it. They were all fabulous. We were but, dead looking for them. You no, know, there again. Jimmy Connor came in. There again, he, he was a great, he had great form in the business. My Uncle Sammy, no. in one episode, he, he was just a guest artist in one episode. Mm. He was doing a turn on the beach, entertaining children on the beach. And, and we, Paul Shane and I, with David, watched him from the front of the Cliff Hotel down on the beach in front of the, where, where we were doing it. And we said, David, you've got to get him into the show. You've got to get him in. And we eventually, we talked him round into booking Kenny for the entire rest of the series. So uh, for, and then my, I would be a huge fan of Kenneth Connor. I was one of the funniest men I've ever seen on screen. Oh, yeah. First time I ever met him, I ended up scrubbing his back in a bath. <laughs> a bath scene, a bath scene where he got this dirty old man, Uncle Sammy, who was grubby and vile. And Paul Shane and I had to put him in a bath and scrub him clean. So that's the first time I ever encountered Kenneth Connor was scrubbing his bath in a back in a bath. <laughs> Never <laughs> he was kind too, very kind man. It was lovely. Yeah. It was lovely. Mm -hmm. But, um, I mean, Leslie Dwyer, yeah. you, when you're talking about, you know, somebody with form in the business, I mean, Leslie Dwyer was in The Cruel Sea with, with um, Noel Coward. Oh, no, you. in which we served, sorry, in which we served. Dennis. And, you know, he, he had such form as an actor. Leslie Dwyer. Sorry? Leslie Dwyer was actually on the bill with Mari Lloyd in 1910. That's right. Oh my God. He yeah. was, but he was a boy comedian. Yes. His father was Johnny Dwyer, yeah. singing. Yeah. Double yeah. act, Clapham and Dwyer, wasn't it? Yeah. And That's right, yes. On the bill with Mari Lloyd in 1910. Oh Amazing. I mean, that's incredible. We were really lucky because, as I say, once again, we started all together, mostly sometimes singly, having worked with David and Jimmy, and then it came together for this particular Heidi High series. And of course, all the guest artists, because going right back from David and Jimmy's early days as well, when David was on the halls and his mum was um, a singer and so was he, he was a little boy actor and stuff. So when you think 
how privileged we were to actually work with the people that had already had a terrific career as well. So mm. it was marvellous for us to go, wow, well, well, that's what to have you working with so-and-so. You know how you're doing, it's marvellous. I don't think you should ever lose that enthusiasm, really. It's when you get a bit cynical that it can be, oh, I've worked with him, I've worked with her, I've worked with him. How nice it is to think, oh, I was so <laughs> grateful and glad to work with him. Do you know what I'm saying, though? We've yeah. had lots of times. We've been very lucky. Yeah, we have. Totally. We've seen the, we've seen it was the a great of series. <laughs> we've seen the best of it, Spike. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, it would have been nice if people said that about us and said, you'll never guess we did. Oh, years ago, I did um, Panto with Jeff Holland. And oh, and you, you, wouldn't it be nice to think that, you know, you passed the baton on? Do you know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. That's what I think. That's nice. Beautiful. Mm. Cool. So uh, moving on to the next question. This one is from <laughs> Louise Evans. A uh, bit more of a generic question, this one. So um, does anyone have any superstitions? I'm, I'm kind of guessing maybe superstitions about performing or going on stage. Any what? Superstitions. Superstitions. Super right. uh, well, most of the theatrical superstitions that we are... Be, uh, brought up with, particularly whistling in the dressing room. In the, uh, it's forbidden to whistle in the dressing room. If you are, you're sent out and knock the door three times, turn around three times, knock the door, ask them back in. But whistling in the, in the uh, dressing room, it's all because in the old days, in, the, in way back in Georgian times, before communication uh, was invented, cues were given by whistles, you know, and it'd be, flies in, they come in, the scenery would be moved by whistling cues. And of course, it was all supposed to be unlucky, because if you got in the way of a, <laughs> a cloth coming in, you get it battered on your head. You know, <laughs> killed by all these silly things, and whistling became a superstition. And knitting in the wings is another one, which is supposed to be for yeah, the, knitting. knitting in the wings. But there are various schools of thought about this. One of them is the, the clickety clickety clack of the needles going, put the actors off because they could hear it um, mm. off their dial. But the, on the other hand, apparently there was one uh, ballet company that was working and there was a, a dresser sitting in the wings knitting. And this boy dancer came off doing his uh, dancing plies and, and what, party whatevers into the wings and impaled himself on a knitting needle. <laughs> Poor devil. We were going to say he could have punctured himself. Poor sod. <laughs> but but I think we've all got personal superstitions. I don't know what you guys, but I think we all have. Well, I wouldn't. I can't speak for everyone, of course, but I think you feel if you don't do things in order, if you don't, um, you know, like put your makeup on in the same way, the same time. Put your, you know, your powder and everything else, and how you do this, and then you put your costume on, and then you might go and do a few um, warm up exercises. Maybe down, I used to go down, uh, down into the crew rooms and stuff if there's any room. And uh, so I think we, I think we probably all have our own little superstitions because then I think if oh god, I put the, I put the right show on first. Oh, that's no good. I'm going to be terrible tonight. I mean, it's ridiculous. It, you know, the same routine gives you a bit of confidence. Do you know what I'm saying? Well, that's mine. I don't know if anybody else has got any. I always put my left sock on before I put my right sock on. And I'm like, yeah. I don't know why I do that, but I do. It's just, I mean, it's just weird. What do you think, I mean, David? What do exactly. you think? I'm, not, I'm not superstitious at all, but I do respect the superstition. I, wouldn't, I, I would never have whistled in the dressing room because... I knew that was not the thing to, to do in a, in a theatre, um, but I'm not generally superstitious, so <laughs> I respect those that do have superstitions. Okay, yeah. let's let's get back to the show. I've got another question here. Uh, it's, it's popped up a few times as well. Uh, uh, I'll credit this one to Topaz, Topaz <laughs> Penguin. Um, do you have a favourite quote from the show? Quote? Yeah. Yeah, we've seen the best of it, Spike. I think that's yeah. comedy. <laughs> That was the last one, wasn't it? That the final scene when when uh, Ted's um, sitting by the swimming pool and everybody's getting ready to leave the camp for the final time, and Spike walks up to him and and uh, Ted sitting on his suitcase and said, "We've seen the best of it, Spike," and I think that summed it up beautifully. He wasn't acting that day, Paul. He was not acting. 
Oh, bless. Uh, no, I'll never. Do you, do you remember the last time we sang Goodnight Campus? Oh, oh, yes. In the ballroom. Yes. And we were absolutely in sh bits, all of us. Probably. Yeah, yes. You know, we really were. Yeah, it was very sad. I, I remember. It's been a, a wonderful eight years. Lyndon mm. hasn't spoken for six pages. Come on, darling, speak. Mm. You look like you wanted to speak. Oh, oh, yeah, Linda did. Yeah, go on. Oh, yes, no, I was just going to say, um, I, I, my memories of Felix's lines. Um, do you remember when he couldn't say, here we all are? He kept here saying, we here we are all. Yeah. <laughs> and, then he, yeah. and then he kept saying, um, he had to, that line, I'm an orphan. <laughs> and he kept, he could only say, I am. And he couldn't, and he kept saying, what, 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 what? And I just said, what, what, what do you do? For it? What, what, why is it? What do you do really, um, Felix? He said, I'm a comedian. And I said, well, let just replace the word comedian with orphan. And he still, you know, it was, I am an orphan. And here we, here we, <laughs> oh, and it was on the t-shirts at the end party, wasn't it? His, his yeah. all his lines. God bless yeah. him. He was such a lovely. Yes, bless him. He was special, wasn't he, Felix? Everybody loved him. Everybody yeah, yeah. knew him at Television Centre. Everybody, he's just a great guy. And everybody knew him because he'd done all the warm-ups warm for all the other, uh, all the other shows that were there. You know, he, he was a great warm-up man. And who really did forget was. This is your um, life. Do you remember your life, Felix? What a what a night that was. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember? The, the wonderful uh, sweaters that we used to have. Mm. Sometimes blue, sometimes yellow. You know, those um, uh, yeah. fleecy sort of ones. Well, mm. I've still got the one. I've never worn it. I'm waiting that somebody might want it for a, a charity. Um, comedy is a serious business. We always had a quote, mm. do you remember? Mm. And for me, comedy mm. is a serious business. It's, Always reminds me of Jimmy and David <laughs> trying to control well, it, us, it especially I have to say, sorry, uh, 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 especially um, uh, Simon Cadell because he was mischievous. Yeah, Simon had a, 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 a limp in him, you know. And when he used to get going, he, you know, he was funny. He really was very, very subtle. <laughs> What, what kind of mischievous things did he do? Sorry, Kevin. So what, what? what kind of mischievous things did he do? Well, on the stage show, <laughs> now it sounds ridiculous, but we used to have to come um, on the stage show, the musical, and um, I used to, Gladys used to have to meet Geoffrey as though they were going to get married at the very end. Good night, camp as it was. See you in the morning. Uh -huh. All he did one night was put on his upstage ear so nobody could see it, a great big earring. That's the sort of thing he did. <laughs> yeah. course, you know, it was ridiculous and funny. And of course, as he went down the line, because everybody else was lined up and we were in the front going to meet, we're going, you know, because it was just, just so subtle. It was. A great big earring he'd got from somewhere. The audience couldn't see it, but we all could on stage. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> I love it. Um, Sue, sorry, I, th I think you were about he to was, say something yeah, when, it was I, great. when I jumped in. Yeah, just my favourite thing was him always. That, that The line, I mean, it, one of his, um, it was hopeless. When he used to read a, a, a Joe Mucklin's letters out, you know, because Joe Mucklin was his grammar. Was sadly lacking, you know, and somebody like um, Simon's character. But I also like, I also loved it when it was um, when Paul said, "Right, come on then, Ted, come on then, Jed, it's time for you to say something now. We're going to the Olympic size pool. Come on, get on there and say something." So he said, "Live with everybody." <laughs> I loved it when he went, "Pies, pies, who wants a custard pie?" <laughs> 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 and then I just loved it when she said, oh, get it off, I'll do it. But he was so lovely. And I just loved it when he said, pass, pass. Well, I, was watching, I was watching when, when Simon did one of those awful Jeffrey Fairbrother moments at the microphone, when he said, um, hello, campus, Heidi, hi. And they go, 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't generate any enthusiasm at all. It's a full shade. And he's going, give me strength, you know. Yeah. There was a, <laughs> I was standing at the back of the camp with some punters who turned up from the street to watch this filming going on. And that's right. And saying this, <laughs> high. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And this woman turned to me, literally, she turned to me for real and she said, dreadful. <laughs> and walked off. <laughs> 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 Dreadful. Oh, I just do love that, don't you? I mean, sometimes, you know, you'd be doing something. It wasn't necessarily a terminology of anything, but somebody, you see, you get the, the members of the public that didn't know. It's not their fault, you know. Well, people used to come right through the shops sometimes. Uh, cut! Yeah. Madam, oh, you must oh, understand yes. that we're filming here. Oh, sorry. I'm ever so sorry, dog. You know, <laughs> they have this shopping bag and stuff, you know. But I think they were so thrilled because they wanted to be in it, you know. But oh, the public were great, though, weren't they? They've all been great, actually. Great supporters of us all. Great. I, I got a question here from Luke, which might be a good cue for David to uh, show something on camera. Uh, well, that I know he has. Uh, so, Luke Robbins, did you ever get to keep any costumes or props from the show, David? There you go. Oh, fabulous! Um, it doesn't fit anymore, sadly. But there it is. That's the, that's the very, very coat. Of course, it's modelled on the Butlins um, coat. And uh, when Tony and I used to do um, cabaret at the different Butlins camps or hotels, the red coats would always ask if they could put the yellow coat on and have their photographs taken with it. But of course, oh. um, they were forbidden to say Heidi Hi, weren't they, at the camps? It became a bit yeah. of a none thing to do but uh, yeah there's your answer i've kept this I'm, I'm looking after it actually for the bbc um i've got the old milk monitor badges here the different things so happy memories and i wouldn't part with that for the world it's still uh i was only talking the other day to somebody um, about uh, when we started the show uh, and david croft actually approached butlins yes see if we could, if we could film either at filey or clacton one of yes. the earliest Holiday camps and mm -hmm. Robert Butlin, who was then in charge, apparently went mental and said, Absolutely no way. Sorry, but we've spent over 20 years more and millions and millions of pounds on yeah. our image. And we don't want to like denigrating because the, he missed the point completely. He missed the point because Heidi mm -hmm. Hyde was set in 1959. Mm -hmm. And they, they, it, was, it was history that we were talking about as it was before his time. And the BBC and Butlins could have been the best of friends. And because of the results of that silly misunderstanding, you know, Butlins and Pontins both refused to allow their blue coats and red coats, respectively, to shout Heidi High and Hody Ho. And if they did, they'd get sacked. It was such a, a, a silly nonsense, a bit of misunderstanding. You know, it should, should never have happened. Just what, what I find quite strange about that, Jeffrey, is that I, I used to go to like a lot of holiday camps as a kid, and, and there are some things that you kind of mentioned that, that happened in the show that I remember as a kid yeah. um, from going to Pontlins, like uh, Good Night Campers. I always yes. remember they sang that song towards yes. the end of the night for the kids, and that was the cue for the kids to bugger off to the chalet and for the adults to actually enjoy themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. C can I just... Um, uh, verify the story that um, Jeff has just said, because um, Sheila, Lady Sheila Butlin, was a great friend of mine. And she told me, by the time uh, Heidi Hired, you know, um, was being developed and the BBC had gone, to, they had sold out. Lady Butlin had sold out her share and she was mm. absolutely furious that they hadn't taken the Heidi High scene and made one of the camps into um, a, a, a big, big Heidi High development. Because as she said, if um, they can do it in America like Walt Disney did, you know, they could do it with Heidi High. And Jeff is absolutely right um, that they missed the trick in not having one of the camps at least all kitted out 
as Heidi High and the Peggy character and the Gladys character and all the other characters in the actual um, camp. Uh, but she told me that herself. Um, yeah. And she said they missed a big, yeah. big trick yeah. doing that. Yeah, but got, Sad, isn't Jimmy, it? Jimmy but never got, mind, because we did but not the own back. <laughs> David and Jimmy, though, it was great because amazingly, when they realised that they've lost out on a whole, not just the financial aspect, but everything else, because um, they asked us at one point, could we go and do a Jimmy Knees contest at Butlins? And Dave, you see, they obviously realised, and when it was a success, they thought, well, cash in now. David yes. said, absolutely yes. not. And they None said, of you no. go anywhere no. near them. No, and we never did. It, we had to be loyal. Was no, we never did. But, uh, never mind. We're not can I tell you? <laughs> I, I see Ye years, years later, years later to this, in, in the, the end of the 90s, I was presenting songs of praise and I had oh. to go to Buscelli, to the Butlin's camp. And the first thing the manager said to me was, uh, Ruth, um, uh, you won't say anything like Heidi High and Hody Ho, will you? <laughs> I said, no, no, right, I won't. No. Well, I stepped onto the flipping camp, honestly, Sue. And they, of course, they were just going, hello, Ruth, Heidi High, Hody Ho. You know, who doesn't even talk about it? I think Warren has made the perfect um, mappings, though, don't you? I think. Probably that the Butlins runs were a bit too grand, but I think the Warners. Oh yes, but you would have you'd have broken them down. down. I don't think it was actually perfect for for Maplins. Yes, I know, but remember that we had the last, uh, the line of chalets that were there before the war, and Not they kept seven. them, David, so they could actually film Heidi High. They were going to renew them, obviously, because a lot of the chalets around and about were all new, and they had you know, on sweet facilities as they, as it were, you know, um, yeah. but they kept that line of uh, chalets that were, I think, built in 1937, more. built in 1937, mm. and um, mm. the, the camp, yeah. made to be yeah. a prisoner of war camp as well in, in the, uh, in the 45, so. That's right. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's it's a history, and um, I've just made a documentary on yes. Rich, and um, I've done a chapter on kinder transport when Jewish children escaped Nazi persecution uh, in 1939. And, and 10,000 yes. children came across through Harwich to escape That's right. the Nazis. Yes. And they were temporarily housed at Warner's Holiday Camp. And mm -hmm. um, I spoke to one chap who sadly passed away, who was, as a kid, was there. And um, he said it was, it, this was December 1939. It was bitterly cold. And they only survived because Dunlop lent us some hot water bottles. But uh, oh, you know, it's a, a, an interesting history, that camp. Yes, yes, oh. yes, oh, yes indeed. I didn't know it. that, David. Mm. No, I didn't, um, it, I didn't know that about the kinder transport. Yeah. Anybody yeah. that is interested, it's fantastic because I've seen it. And um, David's just made a film uh, all around Harwich and it's uh, available on the DVD. And it's selling yeah. out. So please do get your copies. Yeah. You'll make fabulous Christmas presents. Go on to his <laughs> website. Right. It's right. all be marvelous. Yeah. David, <laughs> David Webfield <laughs> at btinternet.com. Yeah. What is it? What is it? Say that again, David. What was it again? David Webfilms, all one word, yeah. at btinternet.com. Okay, so they, they, they email you for the order. Yes, it's okay. 14 dollars oh, terrific. Carriage. Portrait of Harris, and it's selling very well. I'm pleased to say. Good. Oh, well done, well yeah. done, David. Well done. That's yes. brilliant. Wow, congrats, guys! I just want to manage the time because I know originally I said we would go up to 9 p.m. Um, yeah. We still have three more than 300 people watching. Um, and I'm I'm quite happy to carry on. I just want to kind of give you guys the freedom to you know leave if you have to leave. If you want to take okay, if you want to stay and uh, just take a comfort break. I'm more than happy for you to do that. Let's kind of, yeah, make the, if you want to stay, we'll make it really informal, really relaxed. You need to kind of, you know, get a drink, we, we can come and go and kind of keep it quite informal. Or you can go, it's kind of up to you guys. Did you say you've got 300 questions left? <laughs> no, 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 there's, <laughs> there's probably more actually than that in the chat. 
but no, we've got um, we've got just around three hundred viewers still watching. Um, three hundred and one oh, to be exact. That's people that's still that's watching. That's amazing. Well I, done. I you to join us. In, um, I've got to go because I promise I'd go and see my friend Barbara. She's eighty, and I have to go and say hello to her. She only lives down the road, but. I promise that I'll see it, but I, just before I go, I just want to say, well, we all know because we speak to each other, so it's all fabulous. We all know that we're still really, really good mates, but I want to say on behalf of us all, a big, big shout out to Kevin for organising this. It's a, it's a lot to do, you know, darling, to get everybody around at the same time. Yeah. And uh, I think you've done an amazing job. And also to all the listeners, oh, look at me and the viewers and everything else. Thank you ever so much for your great support. And it's lovely to know that something that was made in absolute faith all those years ago, it's still beloved. So I, for one, cheers. Cheers, oh, and we're still here. And we're still talking about it. Heidi, hi. Heidi, <laughs> hi. Oh. <laughs> God bless you, Sue. God bless you, darling. God bless you. Yeah, God bless. I'll see you soon, everybody. Troll. All right, see you soon. Oh, I love that, don't you? Troll. Uh, and she's gone there, cool. Uh, yeah. So, guys, are, are you all uh, happy to stay? Yeah, fine. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go now. I'm going to go now. Okay, okay, cool. Uh, well, Jeffrey, thank you so much again for joining yeah, us. Yeah, uh, it's, it's been an absolute pleasure. God bless. Shall I turn this off, off or will you turn? Oh, no, I'm it's quick leave. Uh, yeah, I think there's a leave button. Heidi, hi. Heidi, ho! Yeah. Hey, Jeff. Bless, stay safe. Love to Judy. Cool. Now we're kind of the the late night hardcore section, right? It's the, the hardcore <laughs> cast members. Is yeah. Can I? Can I'll do, I'll give you half an hour. Can I do an advert? Half an hour. Please, please, may I do an advert? Yep. Why not? Let's go for it. Thank you. If anybody, because you've got so many viewers, and um, I, I'm wondering if any of you are readers, crime readers. Um, I now write crime crime thrillers as we know some of them have made the charts and if any of your friends like crime books and want to buy them for Christmas um, my web is www.lindaregananline.co.uk or Waterstones or Amazon they're all on they're all there thank Beautiful. you great cool thank you so much Ruth have you got anything to plug you haven't plugged anything yet well, darling, I do actually. <laughs> it's not for me, it's for my daughter, Lori, okay. who actually was in the series of Heidi High. She played uh, one of the scenes in it. Now, Lori has written children's books uh, about a little girl called Hetty, all backstage. And of course, it's her experience of working, of being with me, because uh, Lowry was only about six when I first started Heidi High. And so um, that's all on Amazon, and they're the Hetty series backstage. Um, and she's doing very well with them. And they're very good children's books because they tell you all about um, what happens backstage, which not a lot of people know and understand how quite hazardous it can be. I'm not clever enough to write books like this lot or do films. Um, I was just a jobbing housewife, love, right the way through it all. I just did what was all on the page. Um, and I still do. Um, oh, you're modest. You're modest. You were fantastic, now. Ruth. You're too modest. Yeah, and you're still <laughs> at it, Ruth. That's the thing. Yeah. You're still at it. Oh, and I loved your yes, daughter. Yes, I am. Yes, yes. I've ruined your daughter for you. I used to babysit her, didn't I? That's I right. I ruined her That's right. I pierced her ears and you told I me couldn't afford. I couldn't afford <laughs> babysitting, so somebody had to do it while no, I was on the set. They, asked, they used to ask for you to do all the PAs when we were doing the summer season, and so I, I wasn't doing, asked to do the PAs because I was new to the show, and so I used to look after Lowry when I loved her dearly, but I bought her G-string knickers when she was about nine or eleven and had her ears pierced and a heck and Ruth nearly killed me. <laughs> <laughs> I bet she did. And, I couldn't believe it. This daughter of mine went as a as a nine-year-old, came back as a 19-year-old. But I'll tell you what you did that day as well. You had her ears pierced. Yes. yes. And um and there was something else as well. G string so this girl, G -G it was G-string knickers, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but you know, this is how close 
Kevin, we all were, as um, the family ties within Heidi High. Um, and it, it, there will never be really a show like it mm. because it was a family show anyway. Yeah. Because of the colour in it. Uh, the children loved it. You could sit there with, you know, your eight-year-old or six-year-old or five-year-old, and you could sit there with grandma and all the extended family, and nothing was offensive. Well, we did it. Have one and that script. was the great. We, we had one script that, that caused a bit of a problem with language, and oddly enough, I've just donated that script to um, the East Anglian Children's Hospice for, for an auction, and it's that the Aww. script that the programme was Orphans of the Storm, and we had one swear word where um, Alex Foster, the... Um, oh, played by Ewan Hooper. Yeah, yes. He, he, yes. You remember that um, Peggy got sacked, didn't she? And she was on the station, because um, I think... Alex That's right, Foster yes. tried it on with her. Uh, but um, Sammy resolved the situation. He had, uh, obviously, blackmailed Joe Matt. But surely, I mean, and, and, and it was only probably a, a it, dam or a blast or whatever. Yeah. No, he said, no it wasn't anything awful. No, it was, it was he said, oh, you bastards. And um, that's since been cut from the repeats, incidentally. But that... that oh, has it? Yeah, ah. it would be 40, 40 years ago, and bastards was considered offensive back then. But, of course, today it's just mild, isn't it, today? Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. I loved what you said, Ruth, about um, about Heidi High, about it was one of those shows where the grandparents could watch it, the kids would, would, would watch it. That was the, yeah, exactly what I remember kind of growing up. I remember kind of being in the room with my family, my mum was with there. With extended family, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it brings me on to a, a nice, uh, it's a nice link actually to an another question, which is um, from Rich33, which is, uh, what sitcom do you think ranks with Heidi High today? Is there anything that gets close? George and Mildred. <laughs> okay. Sorry, could, could you? I couldn't George hear all that. Could you actually say that question again? Yeah, yeah. So, which could, sitcom I do you think ranks with Heidi High today? So, is there any kind of sitcom out now which is on par with Heidi High? I don't High? think so. Oh, I see. Oh. I don't think so. It's, it's, it's... I don't think so because that that British comedy mm -hmm. um, is not there anymore. Mm. I mean, it's, it's, taken it's, it's taken a different form. It's taken a different form. It's it, the, the, comedy is far more cynical now, in my opinion, mm. than it was then. That was um, very. Um, it, 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 it was comedy that you couldn't take offence at, really, except for that one word, bastard. In yeah. how many nine series did we do? Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, it's it. it I, I, you know, I think, it's just one offensive thing, apparently, that happened. But I, you know, I think the proof of it the wouldn't, pudding it wouldn't there offend is me. Um, it, I think the proof of the pudding there, Ruth, is that they're bringing all the old comedies back, and there's absolutely repeats, repeats. It says it, it sort of sums it up, doesn't it? Absolutely, well, it certainly does. Um, uh, uh, but things have got very cynical. And um, it, the, in the comedy field these days, I feel compared to what we had, which was this British seaside mm. comedy. I don't think uh, it was you know it was postcard could, comedy. Yeah, could they afford to do um, a hardy high day? Because it was a big scale, wasn't I it? Doubt with, it. With hundreds of cameras, I doubt it. Kind of thing, and it was a big production. No, I, I, I would doubt it. And also, it's, it it's comedy too PC today too. as well. Is is comedy too clean? To be able to do like all the kind of all the Possibly. kind of tongue and cheek kind of jokes that you would get, where the kids wouldn't really get them, but the adults would get them. You, you can't really do that anymore, can you? I mean, that's it. there's a whole different climate. Well, you can't. No, the risque jokes. No, you can't mm. because they they they're offensive to um, you know, to, uh, to what we have as our norm now. Mm. Uh, people can't be risque because they would say that that was extremely rude, you know, today. So, right, fair enough. You know, if you're living in that day and age, you're going to go with it, you know. Um, but I think they're missing out on subtlety. It's a different world. Um, it's a different world. It's a different world. Um, I, I'm really but sorry, I have to go. My dog is desperate to go out, and I've really <laughs> got to leave and take her out. She's going to 
she just keeps looking at me. So I'm awfully sorry. Yeah, no worries. No worries. Linda, it's lovely to see you. Oh, it darling, really I love you dearly. God bless you. God bless you. Send my love. When the lockdown's over. So, we yeah. definitely will. Send my love you to Tony. Yes, yeah. and my big love to Lo, Lolo and John. And Indeed. God bless you. Stay safe and have a happy Christmas, everyone. We'll talk you. Lots of love oh, to Brian. You, Take care oh, of yourselves. You. Thank you. Love you loads. God Bye, bless. Darling. Bye. Thank Bye. you, Jillian, very much. Bye, everybody. Thank you for coming. Cheers, Linda. Bye-bye. God bless. Cool. With only two of well, you, dear, I, get, I, I, really <laughs> I get really geeky. <laughs> we get like really specific geeky questions, which I've been avoiding. Uh, so I wanted to kind of get reaction from everyone. Um, and, and there've been like a few kind of geeky, kind of specific questions. So I'll, I'll pick one out. So Ruth, right? So when you and Jeff were having champagne, the cork popped and champagne exploded everywhere. Your reactions looked genuine. Do you remember this? As if you didn't know that was going to happen. Was that planned? Do you no. know what that was referring to? I remember this happening because, um, uh, uh, David Croft said to me, if it goes all over the place, Ruth, are you going to say anything? Uh, and now, you weren't allowed to ad-lib, as David will tell you. Uh -huh. You didn't ad-lib at all. You didn't alter one word of that script. So I said, ad-lib? He said, yeah, what are you going to say if, um, if it goes all over the place? And off the top of my head, I said, Oh, we are feeling frisky tonight, like that. <laughs> and he said, that'll do, that's fine. Well, unbeknownst to me, he had the prop boys shaking the champagne <laughs> up behind the flat of the, uh, uh, of the studio, um, uh, uh, the box set, and they were shaking it up. No wonder it went all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, didn't, you make a rude, you rude, didn't you make a rude gesture with the neck of that bottle? No, that was another time. <laughs> that was another How many bottles time. were there? Wow. It was on that one. That, I know the one you mean. That, yes, I know. Mm, yeah. Um, that was to do in a, in a restaurant that we were in. Uh, but this was in the, um, in the office, if I remember rightly. You know, mm -hmm. and she got in to, to draw up her leg. She'd got this pencil because in those days they didn't have much money for um, nylons, so they used to um, colour their legs and, uh, and then they draw a pencil up there. Absolutely. And she, she got old um, uh, Sammy Cadell was playing the part there. Yes. Um, uh, and she got him to draw up her draw leg. The, the seam on the, and then on she the, used to go, oh, can you just do it a bit higher? Just, just... <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> um, okay, so David... But, um, no. uh, cool. So, uh, David, a specific question for you. Uh, did your character have a name, or was it just the twins? In the, I was, in the I was, we were Stanley and Bruce Matthews, and I was Stanley Matthews. <laughs> and uh, as a kid growing up, I, the real Stanley Matthews, the football, the Blackpool and England football was a big hero of mine. So I was thrilled to be named after Stanley Matthews. Stanley Matthews. Okay, gotcha. Uh, and next one for Ruth. Is there anything left? And this is from Chris Doyle. Um, is there anything left you would like to achieve as an actress in your career? Yes. I'd like to do some Brecht. I know it sounds a bit high flown, but it isn't. Uh, Bertolt Brecht um, wrote Mother Courage. And I'm of an age now to play it because I'm, I'm in my late seventies and that's the age you should play it, I think. Um, there are one or two parts I'd like to do like that, but whether they will come my way, who knows, darling? Who knows, because this lockdown has um, sort of, um, really put a, a stymied uh, uh, it's on 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 uh, on theater really yeah. you know so we'll have to see what happens after it okay. you know we really will gotcha and uh, another question from chris i'll put it to both of you would you ever do like a reality tv show like i'm a celebrity 
well, if they pay me about 75 grand, <laughs> I could, 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 could suffer in silence. Put my head in amongst a load of cockroaches for 75 grand, yeah. Yeah, that's going great, isn't it? They pay about 75 to 100 grand yeah. per person, yeah. So the answer is yes. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, David's available if you want. If well, I, I have you. actually done one. Um, I did um, the Full Monty Girls Night Out, uh -huh. which won an Emmy, and I got it in the post last week, an Emmy Award for um, 2019. It oh, got wow, it. Congrats. So I'm very thrilled about and and um I was very thrilled to be able to be involved in that. Um and uh, Victoria Derbyshire was in that with me as well. So um I'm rooting for her in the castle up in North Wales. I might be I think it's gonna be jolly chilly up there. Oh, yeah. be freezing, oh dear, yeah. dear, dear, dear. Prefer the jump, you know. Prefer the jungle to a cold Welsh castle. Oh, yes, so would I. Any day. <laughs> yeah, any day of the week. <laughs>